machines are the source of some confusion and also some controversy. The Brennan Center for Justice has warned the new system could lead to overvotes or ballots the machines can't clearly read that appear to have more than one vote in a single contest. Joining me now to discuss the changes to the way we'll cast our ballots in the state is Barbara Bartoletti, the legislative director for the League of Women Voters. Her group advocated for the use of these new machines. Barbara, thanks so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me, Caitlin. And now your group really was a loud vocal advocate of getting these machines on the record here in New York State. We were. We specifically advocated for what is called the optical scan technology, which is what you will use tomorrow. Instead of the touch screen, which was used throughout the United States after the 2000 election and the new machinery under the HAVA, the Help America Vote Act. And actually, uh, New York State, being as dysfunctional as we sometimes are, um, actually, it was a good thing this time. We are the last of the 40, of the 50 states, 49 other states have used differing technologies. And what we were able to do was learn from their mistakes. And we literally, then went out and advocated for the optical scan technology and we were able to convince counties and the Board of Elections that this is the machinery that we should be using. So tomorrow will be actually the first time voters will see them in real time. Right. In New York State, though, it hasn't been without controversy. There have been people who are predicting mass hysteria tomorrow, long wait times for voting. Do you predict any of that happening? No, I don't think we will have mass hysteria. I think the city will have some glitches perhaps, but because um, this is a very low turnout election, unfortunately, in our, as far as what we consider to be, um, you know, we want everybody to vote in every election, but we do think this will be a, a low turnout election. If this had been used for the first time in the general election, there may have been more problems. But upstate, um, in 47 of the counties upstate, there have been pilot programs that were used previously. So we do think people are going to be more familiar with them upstate. And um, there has been a massive amount of voter education through the Board of Elections and poll worker education, something essential, because poll workers will be relied on tomorrow to actually help voters get over any confusion they might have. And certainly there will be some confusion. You noted that New York was yes. the very last state and there were some pretty decent problems in other states that first tried out this technology. That's right. And some of them had um, uh, computers froze and there was no way to recount votes. And that's one of the important reasons as to why we really advocated for this optical scan. Because it is recountable. Your ballot will be, it, after you vote and the machine accepts it and you have decided that this is your final vote, it drops into a locked box and it is always going to be there as that backup hard copy so that if a there is real controversy and legal challenges in that district, they can go back to these machines and not only, just like they could the lever, not only recount the machine, but they can then open the locked box and they can recount the specific ballots. So that is an additional measure to make sure that your vote, after you have cast it, is actually recounted accurately. And in New York State, we've certainly seen our fair share of contests that needed to be recounted or had challenges That's to that. That's right. In many legislative races, and uh, we, we will see tomorrow if in the Republican gubernatorial primary there may be some of that that goes on. But we feel very confident that with this new technology, your vote will count and it will be accurate. And I think those are the two important things that we advocated for with these new machines. Now, how they actually work is not going to be that difficult. If you have ever filled out an SAT test or you've ever filled out a lottery ticket, you know how to do this. You're going to get an 11 by 17, I believe it is, um, ballot. Much if you've ever cast an absentee ballot, it will look something like that. You take it to a privacy area and they're going to look different in different counties, but they will be, you will do it in private, and then you will just circle in. And I guess what I would caution people to do is try your hand-eye coordination <laughs> skills, just like you did back in kindergarten, right. and color in, or with the, the pen they provide you, just within that little oval. And then you put it in a privacy sleeve, like a manila folder, and close it up, and then you carry it to the machine. Nobody is going to see your ballot. 
and you carry it to the machine and you stand in line depending on, you know, hopefully uh, the lines will move very quickly mm -hmm. and you will take it out of the privacy sleeve, you will put it into what looks like a fax machine or an ATM if you're doing a deposit slip, same type of thing. You will slip it into that machine and then you will literally, it will say to you, your ballot has been, a scanning ballot, and then it will say your ballot has been accepted, thank you for voting. Or it will say, you have voted for one candidate too many times, and it will spit it back at you. You have the option then of saying, I don't care, I voted for all the other offices, take it as is, mm -hmm. or they will give it back to you, the machine will give it back to you, you take it to a poll worker and say, I would like a new ballot. And then you just repeat the process, making sure, hopefully the second time, that you don't vote twice for, for the same office. The way you've described it seems pretty rudimentary. You walk through the steps, you put the voter on the machine, done, done for. And Why do you think there's been such up, up, uprising about this? Well, I think people don't like change. You know, they, a lot of people say, oh, I like the fact that when I pulled the curtain open, I heard a click and I know it went, my vote was counted. And other people say, oh, why do we have to change? I've, we've voted on these lever machines for over 100 years. Wow. So people, some people have never seen anything else. However, what I would say to them is just remember, when you first got your computer and you had to use that mouse and you had to click and you had to get on that computer, it was really kind of scary. At least it was for me. Right. And some people would say in my office that I never did learn. But, you know, most people now today take all of that for granted. They get out on Facebook, they Twitter, they, you know, text, they do all kinds of things. So change may be scary, but it quickly becomes routine. And I think from the league's point of view, what we are saying to people is if you are registered in a party and you have the opportunity to vote in this primary, Please do not let the machines hold you back. Go out there and vote for the candidate of your choice. Use practice on that new machine, and if you want to spit your, can your, your ballot back and try it again, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. You quickly will figure out that this is a very relatively simple process to go through. And I would also say, if you are a disabled voter, there are ballot marking devices in all of the voting polling places. So please don't think that you can't vote if you're disabled. It really, that's what HAVA was all about, the Help America Vote Act, was all about allowing the disabled to vote in private and have their vote counted. Yeah, this decision to change the voting machines really went hand in hand, not only with the Bush-Gore decision, that's but right. also with HAVA to ensure that disabled voters wouldn't be disenfranchised, could get out that's there and right. vote. That's right, and for years and years, decades, Disabled voters have had to vote absentee ballot or they had to have someone else vote with them for them. And this was very heavily lobbied in Congress when there was the opportunity because of Bush v. Gore to change the way we vote and make it more effective. And the disabled community was very strong in saying this is now our opportunity to make sure whatever machine is out there is good for our disabled community. And they were very successful, and so all of America can now participate in a private vote and make sure that their vote is counted. Yeah, I think it's important when you say all of America there, because especially in primary contests, it's difficult to get anyone to come out and vote, let yes. alone people who are nervous about the machines right. or may never have That's seen right. them before or are nervous about the primary elections. So do you think this should more be an indicator that people should go out and vote, try it out, see if you can... Oh, I think if you are certainly registered in a party, I mean, not only, we know the party faithful come out, it's a huge get out the vote for those candidates who have, are, are working to their base. But we would, it, clearly, we always advocate that everybody who is registered in the primary, you must be registered in a party, as you know, but we advocate that everybody get out there and vote. And tomorrow, the polls upstate open at noon. You have until 9 p.m. to vote. This is a great opportunity to come out and not only do your civic duty, but to practice on this machine so that when there is a heavier turnout in November, you'll just breeze right yeah, through No it. problem. Go no right up problem. there and vote. And that we're hoping that there are no problems in November because this is, we hope, because it's a gubernatorial election here in New York, that it's going to be a very big turnout. Certainly. And fingers crossed for tomorrow? Fingers crossed. And we will be in our office, uh, the New York State League of Women Voters, we will be there all day. Uh, in case there are people who have questions, who have problems, and I would encourage them to go to our, our page, um, 
lwvny.org. You can link to, uh, to the, the State Board of Elections um, site where you can actually practice going through this process. You can link to our Smart Voter, which gives you some biographical information, those candidates that chose to do it. So lots of information out there for people to, to have access to. And of course, our final word, Caitlin, is always get out and vote. Get out and vote. I agree with you there. Thank you so much, Barbara Bartoletti, for coming on today. And we will be back one final time after this quick break. Stay tuned.